This podcast is brought to you by Always Possible. Alwayspossible.co.uk In the UK, sometimes the rest of the world feels quite far away. And when we think about impact and what ripples we might create in our work, my hunch is that most UK leaders look at what is immediately around them. And there's absolutely no problem with that. But as we see more and more people displaced from their homes in places over there, the greater the reality is that over there doesn't exist. Global conflict, divisive politics, business supply chains, pandemics, money trails, and of course the climate emergency, demonstrate our interconnectedness as a human race more than ever. Even the smallest UK business or charity has an impact in the rest of the world, even if it doesn't do it consciously, through who it hires, where it spends money, and the decisions it makes. But what about the people around the world who are bearing the brunt of breakdowns in humanitarianism and economic or political order? Are these people always destined to just be the sufferers of crisis and beneficiaries of aid, rather than entrepreneurs of change? Does suffering cancel out any potential? If you were, say, a teenage Syrian female, persecuted by your own government and forced to flee to another country where you didn't speak any of the language, what fantastical levels of bravery would be needed in that position to become a change maker rather than one of history's victims? In this episode of the Possibility Club, looking at practical bravery, we'll explore this idea of staring down trauma in order to create meaningful change. When my guest was 14, she had to make her way past the mutilated bodies of her neighbours, shielding from bombs and chemical weapons attacks, to leave her home in Syria with her small family. In Turkey, where she had to resettle, she broke down. And the very real trauma of her circumstance and situation took its toll on her mental health in a profound way. Yet in 2023, she is now heralded around the world as a rather extraordinary entrepreneur. She taught herself to code and became one of the country's most ambitious young computer scientists. She has established one of Turkey's top free providers of online mental health and trauma support to displaced people and survivors of natural disaster. And her impact will definitely not stop there. I'm Richard Freeman, and in this edition of the Possibility Club, it is a privilege to be talking about surviving trauma and using that to create your own measurable impact with the remarkable Jean Davoud. Well, it's the Possibility Club and I'm Richard Freeman and this is the usual drill. I'm joined by a spectacularly brilliant guest to explore all things to do with impact practical bravery, the people who are out there uh, changing the world one decision at a time, um, and all of the complicated challenges, joys, uh, bits of learning that come with that. And I'm really, really thrilled to be joined all the way from Turkey by Jean Dawood, who is an entrepreneur. She is uh, an ambassador for One Young World European Commission, which we're going to talk about. She's a a phenomenal public speaker. Uh, I think she's going to be probably um, in charge of everything very soon, and I really hope so. (laughs) So let's explore. Jean, how are you? How how is this sunny Thursday afternoon uh, in Turkey where you are? And, how, and how, yeah, how's life? Thank you so much uh, uh, for inviting me to this uh, amazing podcast first. And uh, nice to meet you, Richard. In Turkey, everyone is confused, especially after this big earthquake happened. And uh, a lot of people are uh, even more stressed uh, after the flood happened in Şanlıurfa city is where I stay. Uh, even if it was an earthquake city, but we also have uh, good news that the weather is becoming better. And uh, I think this is a sign of hope and uh, for us to uh, work and uh, to uh, concentrate on the positive things in life. Well, what a what a what a great philosophy. I mean, I couldn't even come close to imagining what you've been through. What what has the kind of real visceral impact 
been over the last few weeks? How are people how are people getting through it? Um, the people changed locations a lot, and uh, me, me and my family were from these people. We changed location a lot, also. Uh, even uh, it has been also nights we stayed in the car and uh, because it's uh, always happening at the night and uh, it's not planned. So uh, people are all the time like shocked, don't don't know what to do, afraid. And uh, a lot of people have like, like the problem of sleeping, of eating, of uh, going to inside of any building uh it's been more than two months from the big disaster but i believe uh, people are now uh, trying to uh, go back to their routine and that is where like where i am trying also to help especially the people who lost some of their family friends me my sister also we lost uh, friends of us uh, so it's not an easy situation so we only have the uh, will to be able to focus on the good things uh, otherwise life will not be continuing for us well all all power to you and your 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 communities for having such resilience and yes obviously these are natural disasters but they're also they should be so much more avoidable politically there's a lot of there's a lot of bad decisions being made. Let's focus on you. Tell me a bit more about Jean. What's your what's your adventure so far? What's your story? What's led you to being where you are, doing this such such kind of compassionate work? What motivates you? I in fact do so many things at the same time. Uh, beside of like I'm a computer engineer. I'm the founder of uh, Peace Therapist, as you mentioned before. I'm also glad to be one young world European Commission Peace Ambassador, and uh, I'm the member of uh, the board of women entrepreneurs at the Union of Chambers of Commodity Exchanges of Turkey. At the same time, co-founder at Urfa Agro Women's Cooperative. So there is a lot of things to do in life, but uh, I also believe that we need to focus our energy also mainly on one big thing, uh, which is peace therapist for me. Uh, I found that peace therapist according of my own experience. Uh, I was uh, 14 or 15 years old when the war started in Syria. Uh, I am Syrian and I was in Raqqa city when it was started. It was like the city where the war started. Uh, it was unexpected at all. And uh, we uh, suffered a lot, me, my family, and we were obligated to stay in the war situation for approximately two years. Uh, for someone at my age at that time, uh, it was so traumatic that I saw so much things, even from the window of my own room, to see like uh, cut off heads and uh, parts of humans, uh, humans' uh, body on the road, um, because uh, the main hospital of Raqqa City was it was in front of our home so that even doubled the trauma that i have experienced after we heard a lot of crying and uh, all of that made us uh, wait for the right time to be able to get out of that city to uh, stay um, as an attempt to stay alive uh, we wanted to survive my father wanted to take take us to a safety and that happened after a long time uh, in fact uh, but it take also a time until we decided until we reached to that point because at first we didn't know this war will last for this time this will be for a long time and it will not be even going for the better for after a while uh, everything was um, unknown a lot of unknown things the night we escaped was even an, another story. And if I explained it, uh, it will be like, we need another 
hour for it. So I will uh, skip this part and uh, come to the part when we came to Turkey. Uh, the moment we uh, crossed the borders, I thought uh, now uh, the war has ended for me. And I thought everything will start to be uh, better, but I didn't know the war uh, finished from outside and just started inside of me. Uh, so I had some psychological problems and I was not willing to got, get out of the home for a totally one year. Uh, I was lucky that I had so much supportive family and they were beside of me. Also, my siblings experienced the same thing. And uh, maybe our togetherness and uh, their support was the biggest way for us to get out of this. At that time, in fact, I was in a desperate need of psychological support. But I uh, could not get out of the home. I didn't know Turkish. There were a lot of things which were limiting me, which were like um, preventing me from being able even of uh, taking something that I need. And then my family uh, wanted me to uh, like education is so much important for me to for my family. So they wanted for us to continue our life, to continue our education, even in a new language. So I started to continue high school and then I went to the university. I started uh, university at computer engineering uh, department. I was attending a lot of seminars, conferences, courses, and many other things at the same time. I think at that time I was trying to find what is my passion in life. And uh, one day when I attended my first entrepreneurship program, and uh, that was when the trainer saying in entrepreneurship, you are building something which makes people's life easier. And that was the sentence made me to feel uh, like that is what I'm looking for. That uh, directly connected me with uh, what I have suffered from psychological problems. Around of me, I saw like a lot of refugees as, are still suffering from a lot of psychological problems and uh, not all are lucky as I was uh, to have a supportive family, to have a family. Mm. Uh, because they also there is a lot who who lost their families, who lost their loved ones. Uh, so I wanted to do something. I wanted to draw a border for this problem because I know what it is. I I was there, and I really want to do something uh, there. That was the point where I started to work on peace therapist. I was at second class of the university. And I started to develop myself. I gathered that with my uh, experience as a computer engineering student. I developed myself in, in mobile application development. And I started to write the code of the platform by myself at that time. Mm -hmm. I found my passion. I knew what I want to do in this life at that moment. And I started to go after uh, what I can do in this field. It started as like, I wanted to support refugees, but when I look around of me, I realized that not only refugees need to have psychological support, it's everyone, every human, it's a right. It should not be a privilege, it should be a right. It is like something important uh, for every one of us. Life is not easy. Uh, we can uh, face a lot of problems at every stage of our life, and it's not related to the age also. What you encountered as a child still, Jin, you know, is more than anybody should have, you know, and, and would break the strongest person. I, I, I've, my daughter's 14, and I'm just thinking about... You know, if that was if that was me, I, would, I I don't know how I would have been able to get through that at all. What do you think it was within you and 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 sounds like your your family as well that that always sought to come through this and find a kind of practical 
channel for your emotions, for your ideas, rather than just be angry? I could see my family sacrifices a lot for us. Uh, I saw how my father lost everything he built in his life, everything he wanted to make as an investment for us in the future uh, has been destroyed in a few, um, has been destroyed immediately after the war. Mm. And I saw my families, my fathers, my mothers, uh saw them how much they are trying to be beside of us they did sacrifice a lot and uh, this made me feel that i want uh, to do something for them that they will not feel like everything they have worked until now for us have been destroyed it's not been destroyed it, they have invested in our personalities they have invested in our education they have invested in our awareness and nothing of this has been uh, gone and i wanted to work on the things that is not gone i wanted to make them proud and i am as a person uh, i am a positive person and at that time i wanted to uh, concentrate on the good things, concentrate on developing myself, concentrate on helping others. This podcast is brought to you by Always Possible. But who are we? Always Possible works with ambitious businesses, charities and public services that are thinking about what's next. From architects to aerospace companies, puppet theatres to primary schools, business networks to big data analysts. If you're wanting to be brave with some big decisions or to be clearer about what to prioritise, then an award-winning workshop from the Always Possible team is a brilliant starting point. We care about just one thing, building ideas that work. For creative, intuitive and practical expertise, consider Always Possible as your strategic partner. To find out more about how we could power up your mission, visit alwayspossible.co.uk. Alwayspossible.co.uk. So, so you've taken your experience and you've you've taken your skills as a computer scientist and the resources given to you by being at the university. You've spotted a problem, one directly in front of you, but also as you've said, started to see actually there's a wider thing here. You know, psychological support is a right, it's a human need. Yes. Um, so how does the Peace Therapist platform, how did that develop and evolve? You know, how does it work? Uh, Peace Therapist platform works B2B and B2C. It's providing psychological therapy uh, by expert psychologists. We have many different psychologists uh, who have many uh, different expertisements and we have the profiles of them. And uh, we provide this uh, service in uh, three languages, English, Arabic, and Turkish. It is also a social initiative. It's not only providing this for refugees, it is providing it for people afflicted by the earthquake and uh, we have a goal of uh, reaching 1000 hours of uh, therapy uh, sessions uh, until the end of may uh, for people who are affected by the earthquake it's not only the earthquake that affect these people. They have a lot of many different problems from the past. And it's like not for the refugees, we have many, a lot of like refugees who also suffered from war trauma. They could not like heal from it. And now there is another trauma that's happened. So we have a lot of work to do. That is absolutely amazing. But I get the impression from you, from your ambition that this could be the start of something quite big. And where do you see it going? Uh, I hope so. I, I hope to reach as people as we can, uh, because it is the goal of Peace Therapist. Uh, we would like to uh, heal because uh, I really know 
how much important is this in social life, in work life, in uh, family, in relationships? It is affecting us everywhere. And I think the big realization for for ev for everyone, for every person in every country, is now looking at the reality of displacement, whether that's from fleeing persecution or, or war, as you have done, whether it's about natural disasters such as earthquakes and and floods, whether it's climate change and islanders seeing their land disappear under water, other forms of kind of economic and, and, and cultural instability. You know, the reality is people are needing to move their home from one place to another in, in quite big numbers at the moment. And it doesn't feel like the world has been ready for that. Sitting here in the UK, I'm embarrassed about my country's stance on providing sanctuary and salvation to people. And certainly in terms of how it treats people once they are here seeking support. And so thinking about what you've created and this psychological um, therapeutic kind of brokering, this matching of experts in different languages with people who are really needing that help, you know, it feels like this is a solution or part of a solution to what will be a global problem for, for many decades to come. Do you have plans to increase the number of languages to be able to broaden the number of therapists and, and, and health experts that are on the platform? Uh, yes, uh, we have plans to add many other languages in the future. Uh, we want to work with uh, therapists, psychologists who are uh, have expertise in different fields also from different countries. So I want to make a mix also of, of therapists, psychologists from everywhere, talking every language from every culture to be able to provide the needs uh, for these people. As we have also a matching system in, on the platform, uh, after they do the questionnaire, uh, we are like matching them automatically with a psychologist who is like the most appropriate with his situation. And that would be even uh, more uh, higher, uh, pro uh, higher percentage to uh, match with the right person if we had like a bigger database of psychologists in the future. You gave a speech in Manchester last year to, to a very big audience. I know that through the work that you're doing with One Young World, you've got opportunities to speak to, you know, larger and larger groups of people in all sorts of different places about this spirit and this energy and this idea that you've got. Where do you see that going? And, 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 and what is it that you want to be famous for? It was amazing to have uh, this experience with One Young World. One Young World have many different ways to improve uh, what people, especially I can recognize they are providing more support for people who want to do a change in this life, to want to make an improvement in life. And that made me feel so, uh, that made me feel so good things. Because when you see the amount of people who are all working for the, for the good things, for humanity, this gives me hope, uh, this gives me power, this makes me even believe more uh, about the energy, about what, what we are working on to provide uh, people in different ways uh, support. It is uh, tackling global issues with uh, with many different organizations and having the uh, platform on the global stage uh, was so important for me. That made me also network with many different people and that made even uh, the collaboration uh, for peace therapists with many different uh, organizations even easier. Uh, One Young World invited me as peace ambassador and have the discussion about conflict resolution even after the summit uh, about peace building. It was a real pleasure to have this discussion and it was uh, moderated by Barbara, uh, the program manager of this uh, program, which was funded by a EU. Mm -hmm. I cannot explain how much is uh, that important for me. And uh, where you said um, it's about providing hope, 
uh, a sense of humanity to, do, to those uh, have lost so much in, in life. What's next for you, do you think? Uh, technology is uh, so much important uh, because it's making everything easier, uh, but we even may need to pay attention about how we use technology because as everything can be, uh, as it can make it easier for us for to reach good things, it's also even making it easier for us also to reach bad things. Mm. Uh, we need to concentrate our work, our energy uh, for ourselves at the first step, uh, then for or the organizations we are working the, we are working with to focus on the good things and that is what i believe in life it's as much as we believe and want to do good things our consciousness also will be feeling uh, good about this which will making uh, us even feel happier uh, about uh, every situation we are uh, tackling with it in life are you getting the sense that others are following in your footsteps? Are people contacting you saying you've inspired me to to, to do something, or, or uh, are other, you know, is, is your university using your example to to help others to to do similar things? Yes, yes, for sure, they are doing this. It's not only about psychological support. Uh, there is also a lot of uh, students who are reaching me to do an internship in our company, company mm. as we are. We are also a technology uh, company, mm. and uh, I am providing at the same time uh, these students as it was a hardship for me not having a role model, not having a mentor, especially in this place, uh, which is in Shanlurfa. It is uh, near of Syrian borders. Uh, we have like a not supportive community. Uh, we have like uh, so much traditional things which could be ma could making uh, difficulties for us if we want to do something really new, technological, and even uh, I because I want this to do this as a social entrepreneurship. I have like a lot of people who are giving me opinions about changing this to more profit things, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of hardships that's happening at the same time. Uh, otherwise being a refugee and being a woman. Having these people who are reaching me from the university, from Shanulfa city, from Turkey, from Syria, from refugees, allowing me to ask them, how can I help them? And uh, generally they want to do internships and that's what we are doing with uh, Peace Software Company. I'm also like providing them mentorship about uh, both of technology and entrepreneurship, also social entrepreneurship, making a special time for this, uh, making me feel uh, better because I knew I needed this also. Whatever I had as a hardship in my life, I want to make that easier for someone next of me who is coming and asking for this help. Mm -hmm. How big is your team now? How big is your company? As a peace therapist team, core team is 10 persons, but we have uh, more also, we have more than uh, 150 psychologists at the background uh, enrolled in the uh, system uh, of, uh, in the system on the platform of peace therapists. And and being a, a female refugee and, and one still, still relatively young, has that been a barrier? Do you think, in terms of being taken seriously as a as a businesswoman, mm -hmm. as a as a technologist, is that something has now been overcome, or do you still feel that? Do you still feel people are putting traps in their way or giving you advice that you don't need or want, but just simply because they they don't trust that you will you will have all of the you know the skills and aptitude and, and connections, even though that's clearly absolute nonsense. Yes, yes, I had a lot of this and, and um, because I was young when I, start, I started, I, I was at second class at university, I was so ambitious, I wanted to do that really and I, I had I also the Turkish language was not 100% for me at that time and I was young, a woman, a refugee and a lot of things, a lot of uh, uh, things that would make it harder uh, for me to start a thing, even like uh, 
I I know and I felt a lot of places where was not taking me was not taking the idea seriously, especially uh, in a world that have been going so much material. And this is a social thing. This is a well-being thing. And, and you can see like one young girl who is a refugee and cannot talk uh, Turkish 100 percent. Um, they don't think that this could uh, this could be done. They thought it is like a two months of enthusiasm and that will be gone after a while. Uh, but that even made me more insistent uh, to work on this. Uh, because I see, I see the need. I I want to do this, and I made it the goal of my life. And since then, I started to work on this. And uh, yes, now the situation changed. Asking me or inviting me for many places to do uh, explain about the experience. Um, to talk how we can do something together, how we can do help uh, places like this or this together. Uh, this is a good thing uh, and could be a good example uh, for people uh, who are having a lot of pressure uh, on them uh, to make them not believe in what they are doing. Mm -hmm. I want to say if you know uh, you want this, if you you know yourself and you know uh, you want to do this, go uh, after your dreams and believe in yourself and it will happen. Uh, when the, I had the idea of peace therapies, even the idea of making someone get out of that psychology, even one person's uh, health is better now because of what we have built uh, as peace therapists would make me proud, would make me feel even better, would, would make me uh, forget about all the uh, bad things happened. And that was the point where I had uh, my uh, power to continue on this. And what a power it is. Well, that feels like a really positive and optimistic point to wrap up. Jean, it's been an absolute humbling uh, privilege to talk to you. I think what, a, what an amazing set of things you've achieved. I wish you absolutely all, all the luck in the world with Peace Therapist and, and your other projects. Thank you for being a guest on the Possibility Club. Thank you so much. Thank you for your uh, invite and I am glad uh, that I'm here. Uh, take care of yourself and of your psychology. <laughs> Thank you for listening to The Possibility Club Practical Bravery. If you enjoyed this episode, do like, share, review, tell everybody about it. Look in the show notes for all the details of today's guest, stuff we talked about, stuff that's of interest, new things to read, new things to listen to. And if you are running a business or a charity and you are trying to accelerate or improve the impact that you have in the world if you want to be famous for what you do and what you change rather than just what you sell then talk to us alwayspossible.co.uk we want to hear from you we want to talk to you we want to amplify and elevate your ideas and who knows we might be able to help you feel more confident and clear about what's next alwayspossible.co.uk We'll be back in a couple of weeks with a new special guest and a new insight on practical bravery in action. The Possibility Club is an always possible podcast. The interviewer was Richard Freeman for Always Possible and the producer and editor was me, Chris Thorpe Tracy, for Lo-Fi Arts. Have a good week. Alwayspossible.co.uk Fine.